four, BSO, I was Michelangelo, the artistic flow coming from STL mode. The legendary shows, I knew I'd be a star, but little did I know, it wouldn't be from bar. See, that's the big lead, the radar online. I wasn't the undefeated, but I still was gon' shine. I took a few L's, took them shots like pop, but then I got my weight up, like Jason Witten. I pivot like Brian Clark, skipping Bailey, Shannon Sharp. Don't have to scream like Stephen A to get my point across. Climb Jamel Hills, won carry championships. They were quick to pull the gun, hoping Rob would quit. But 15 years later, Rob still the shit. Rob still legit. Rob still on everyone. Pound for pound list. Rob is courtside. Rob is ringside. Catch Rob outside at the 50 yard line. Don't act surprised. Rob is a winner. George Steinbrenner cooking up these headlines. What you want for dinner? Okay. The Black Sports Center. You know who I be. Triple O G. The Ohio State University. That's who reps me. I love for a friend. I just murdered this track called at a dead spin. The headline king is back. Honeys lies the head that wears the hot take crown. Stephen A. Smith is a celebrity. He's famous. He's infamous. He's popular. He's an entertainer. All these things are facts. It's not fiction. It's not opinion. These are facts. So when people got really upset that ESPN's entire coverage of the Knicks and the Pacers game seven was about Stephen A. Smith. I laughed. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Because you never blame the supplier. Blame the user. You made Stephen A. Smith popular. You made Skip Bayless popular for 30 years. You made Nick Wright popular. All of these hot take shows, all of these guys making millions of dollars a year, is because you engage in what they're doing. It's the reason that Kendrick Perkins sit up, sit at home late at night trying to think up catchphrases because he knows no matter what he says, even if he's taking from butt crack sports, if he gets enough engagement, that next contract is going to have a lot of money involved. So there'll be a lot of more zeros behind it. You created these individuals. So in my mind, it's very difficult when you complain about them. And I know what you're saying, Rob. You were just complaining about Stephen A. Smith. That is correct. But see, I'm not a hypocrite. And I've always been honest and straightforward with you. I understand that numbers don't lie. The facts of the matter is people like sensationalism. People like drama. People like fake stuff more than real stuff. People get off on people's downfall more than their success. I see it every day. I always have. I manipulate it so I have a good life for me and my family. Never lie about that. The difference is with Stephen A. Smith is that he wants it both ways. He wants to be the entertainer. He wants to be a celebrity. He likes being famous. It feeds his ego. He likes being on General Hospital. He likes when Fox News calls him and asks him about presidential elections and things of that nature. He likes going on Joe Budden. He likes attention, like most famous people and social media people do. The problem is, with so much attention, do you have the accountability? Meaning that when you do something and it's clearly wrong, can you take a step back from your ego and say, you know something, that was a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. Or do you continue on the attack? People ask me all the time, what do I think of Stephen A. Smith? Sometimes I agree with them. Sometimes I don't. My personal interactions with them have all been good over the years. And we're not friends or anything. We run across each other from time to time. He's been very cordial. It's very nice. Uh, very soft-spoken, believe it or not. I have friends that he's helped in this business. I know particularly that he's helped a lot of people uh, explode their career. Also know he wields a lot of power. 
at ESPN. I also know he's a very hardworking individual. Nobody works harder than Stephen A. Smith. To me, his issue is accountability and the fact that he can give it, but he can't take it. And that is what happened with the Jalen Brown situation. Because he knows, his producer knows, ESPN knows that the way to get engagement is you just can't be nice and say nice things. So when the topic comes up of Jalen Brown and is he underrated after he dropped 40 points and all of this stuff, you have three guys that have nothing but great things to say about Jalen Brown. No one has any issues with Jalen Brown. There's never been any stories or anything crazy or any he's ever been suspended or anything like that that would suggest that he's not a, a stand-up guy. There's nothing out there. It's just a regular basketball story of if a guy that plays ball is underrated or not. That doesn't move the needle, though. The needle doesn't move for that. So we got to add a little hot sauce to it. You've heard me talk about that before. We got to add some seasoning to it. And that's what Stephen A. did. And that's what he always does. Pulls out his phone. He pulls out his phone and he reads from a source. We don't know who the source is. We don't know where it's coming from. We, we don't know if, if it's been backed up by anybody else. But the source says something provocative, little hot sauce on it. Now we got a discussion. Now we got something that we can put on YouTube. Now we got something we can talk about on the Stephen A. Smith show that we can get some comments from. And normally, nine times out of 10, this just passes. This is something that we see every single day on first take. But Isaiah Thomas pointed out the craziness of it. A, you don't believe the source. Two, you didn't check with anybody else. Three, what the person is telling you that you don't believe and that you didn't check with anybody else is damaging to the person that you're talking about. And you still read it on air. Now, that's not journalism. You can't, you can't say, well, you're not going to reveal my story. That's journalism. No, 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 no. It's not about revealing sources. Everybody has sources. Everybody gets text messages. Everybody gets emails. I got photos of some things that I wish I didn't have photos of. There is what we like to call journalistic ethics. You have to have a line somewhere. And if you get a text about an individual and you yourself thinks the information is shaky, two of your colleagues also believe the information is shaky. You have no other person to back this up. You see, if you had five people tell you the same thing, five individual different people, you have nothing to back this up. There's no other reason to put this on air except you need the hot sauce. You need the engagement. You don't care what this does to Jalen Brown's reputation. You, you're smart enough to understand that people are going to clip certain parts of a of an argument and put it online. When you type in Jalen Brown, you don't see any of the positive stuff. All you see is that Stephen A. Smith source says that he's not marketable because he thinks he's smarter than everybody else and nobody likes him. And instead of just taking a step back, understanding that you're Stephen A. Smith, your voice is bigger than mine, it's bigger than all these people that are tweeting you, hell, it may be bigger than Isaiah Thomas's, it's bigger than all these other people. You are the man. You make the money. You, you tell us every day, you're the number one show. It's Stephen A. Smith, baby. You tell us that every day, you have the reach. Whatever you say goes. Whatever you say people are going to listen to. And instead of taking a step back and saying, you know something, it was wrong. I shouldn't have put that out there without vetting it especially if I didn't believe it. You double down, you triple down, you, you, you quadruple down. And that's what makes people upset and annoyed. It's not the fact that you're famous. It's not the fact that that you, you give hot takes. It's not the fact that you, you, you get to play as entrances, all that stuff. It's that you can't play 
WWE and CNN at the same time. Because that wouldn't fly on a news station. A ra just a random text out the blue from a source that says somebody don't like. That wouldn't write. That doesn't. You could go to any journalism school in America, give that scenario without the names, and ask the teacher, the professor, professor, should I say that text on air? And they're all going to say no. Anybody that's been to journalism 101 know that. The, the, the professor's going to say, you might want to vet that. You might want to get more information. You might want to back it up with something, especially if you don't believe it. Anybody can run with it. I can pull up a phone right now and say, hey, I just got a text. Um, Stephen A, I, they said Stephen A likes men. This, this, is what my, this is what my ESPN source said. This is Stephen A. Smith like men. I don't believe it. I've never heard anything like that before. But, you know, that's what my source says. And I can put that on BSO right now. You don't think that would get on the Googles? You don't think that would be on social media? I'm not Stephen A. Smith, but I got enough sway that if I post it, my source told me they saw Stephen A. going to the Hotel Intercontinental with, with Saucy Santana. You, you don't think that'll... That's what my source said. I don't believe it. That's what my source said. You don't think that'll be on media takeout? You don't think that'll be on uh, the shade room? You understand what I'm saying? So my advice to Stephen A., and I'm sure he's watching, is sometimes just take a step back. And, and what I've learned in life, right, and I think we're all like this. We all think we're right about everything for the most part. Um, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm immune to that myself. But sometimes you have to sit back and think to yourself, I think I'm right. 95% of people out there think I'm wrong. Okay, let me let me think about this for a minute, <laughs> okay? Maybe, maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. Just like the stuff with the Trump. If all these black people are telling you, nah, man, we didn't like the way that came out. We don't like the way you said it. Take some accountability. Don't give us clips of all this stuff that you said and Trump and Harlem and all that. Just sit back and say, hey, man, listen. And his friends should tell him this, but a lot of them are beholden to him to, to basically keep them employed. Say, like, hey, man, you know, 95% of people are telling you that. That wasn't cool. That wasn't cool to do that to Jalen Brown in the middle of a playoff run, possibly an NBA championship. You should have kept that to yourself, at least until you got some more information. But that's where we're at. Nobody's wrong. Nobody's wrong, and everybody loves the negativity more than anything else. Like, I like Nick Wright. Sometimes he's right. Sometimes he's wrong. It may, it's a little weird that when Jokic lost, how excited he was. <laughs> like, you, you, it, that's strange to me, you know. Somebody loses that, that has never done anything to you, that's never personally said anything bad to you, and you're getting hard on over it. Like, Really? You're married with children. That's strange to me. When you're talking about sources, yeah, sources are important. Um, anonymous sources are even more important. I remember I broke a story about how uh, Jerry Jones uh, was threatening his players uh, if they kneeled you know, for the anthem. And then I remember Ian Rappaport very publicly called me a liar. <laughs> I just only for Jerry Jones, 24 hours later, to confirm that I was telling the truth. Never got an apology for that, by the way. And I've never told where I got that information from. I've never told how I knew LeBron was going to, Lo to the Lakers. I understand your anonymous sources. But just before you put something out for the hot sauce, just think about the potential damage uh, you could be doing. Moving on to the WNBA. Oh, my God. Hold on, I got to take a drink. This needs to be a little stronger. 
I got so man. I don't know how long this is gonna be. I, I, I try to make them succinct. I don't want you guys listening for like five hours. You got stuff to do. It's a holiday. But the WNBA. Um, let me just try to take these things, these couple of things, very succinctly. First off, ladies, you have to stop telling men to stop watching the WNBA. You have to stop slandering the fellas. You have to stop talking bad about us. Okay, you know why? Because I have the stats. I have the numbers. The numbers is something like 93% viewership is up. But you know who's that viewership is coming from? 18 to 35-year-old males. That's where the increase in viewership is coming from. The fellas, young fellas. So don't alienate. Your new fan base. And then I uh, and you know, somebody said, Well, Rob, they don't know what they're talking about because they they don't watch. They've never watched. They've never been a fan before. They just out here talking. Hey, welcome to sports. Okay. Welcome to sports fandom where fans talk crazy about stuff they know nothing about. Have you ever watched an NBA game? Have you ever watched an NFL game? Have you ever watched a hockey game, an MLB game? And you see, you think, you know, fan is short for fanatic for a reason. Nobody knows nothing. Everybody's just talking, talking shit. That's that's the whole thing. We just spent 20 minutes talking about Stephen A. Smith, the most famous journalist in sport. No, not, no idea what he's talking about half the time. He didn't know the players on the team, his own team, the Knicks. And he's getting paid $15 million a year. So why would you expect some guy that, that's working at Arby's to be able to tell you everybody on the, the, the Connecticut Sun. <laughs> Stop doing that, ladies. That's the, this is the same stuff like with the Taylor Swift. Don't alienate new audiences. Why would you do that? I wish, I saw, what was the one that was saying? I wish they just, the guy just silent. I said, can you imagine if that was reversed? And it has been, don't get me wrong. But can you imagine if a bunch of guys with a bunch of women decided to start watching the, the NBA said, man, I wish these girls should stop watching our sport. They, they, they heard some bucker, the ladies. Just go back in the kitchen. Stop watching our sport. Well, you killed. <laughs> get murdered. You get murdered. You would get murdered on social media. If you're watching the NBA game and say, man, I wish these girls should stop watching our sport. They don't know what they're talking about. You get heard some bucket. So, ladies, you gotta stop that. You, you got you gotta stop that. Yeah, I don't want the men, the men, the men. We're the reason your ratings up, like it or not. <laughs> and let me tell you, I get it why some of the guys are watching. But listen, look, I mean, I'm sure that's why some girls watch Love Island or whatever it may be. <laughs> it doesn't matter, they watch it, they're paying attention. They're engaging in social media. And the WNBA, the lady, the W, look, I'm not going to get too specific, but let's just say the WB, WNBA knows that you see who they make sure they show showing up in the arena. You see, you know what's going on. I don't have to spell it out for you. Don't alienate the fellas. We're going to be the reason that you'll get this massive new contract. Got all this revenue coming. Don't alienate the fellas. Don't make the fellas, fellas, fellas find something else to watch. He's a lot of stuff on TV. Don't do that. I ain't had a lot. Don't do that. Now let's talk about Caitlin Clark, Ponytail Steph, CC. All oh, things have changed for Caitlin Clark. It's funny how things work. I feel like Angel Reese, when she was in, in college, was seen more as the villain. Or the bad girl in this case. And and Caitlin Clark obviously uh was protected. She was in this Iowa small city, small town, you know, bubble, uh, especially, you know, with the media. Now that they're in the pros, Angel Reese's personality is actually more suited for the pro game. And her game in and of itself is easier to transition to in the pros. Defensive rebounding goes everywhere. You know, shooting, creativity, getting points, assists, sometimes that can be a little bit more uh, difficult. 
So the tides have turned a bit, whereas Angel Reese and others, Cameron Brink and 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 some of the established vets in the WNBA are getting a lot of love. And Caitlin Clark, because she's on a, a bad team and she had a bad start and she's had some, some struggles, is probably getting the first real criticism uh, in her life. But that's how life is. Life is about society building you up, breaking you down, then maybe building you up again, then breaking you down, then building you up. Think about Anthony Edwards' postseason, for example. He went from baby Jordan, <laughs> then the Nuggets won a few a few games, and they're like, oh, pump the brakes on that. But they, didn't, they won game seven, and he was, he was back. He's going to be the face of the league. Now he's getting cooked by the Mavericks, and, and now they're saying he, he's, he's Jordan from the, from the YMCA. He's YMCA Jordan. That's how it goes, up and down, up and down, up and down. But one thing that I noticed, and I got to thank my friend Nick Hamilton for this, is the reality of what's actually happening in the WNBA and what's happening on social media are two different things, two different things. Let me explain. When Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, Cameron Brink, um, all of these young ladies are going to the arenas, you know what I see? You know what uh, Nick told me? Nothing but love for all of them. The little girls, there's guys there, new audience, everybody's Excited, the games are good. Everybody wants autographs. Hayley Clark can have 10 turnovers. It don't matter. Little girls still want to sign her jerseys. Little black girls and loving Angel Reese and all of this stuff. It's a beautiful thing. Then you get to social media. Then you get to social media and it's a race war. I remember when they were teaching Neo in the Matrix what's real and what's not. And he kept messing it up. <laughs> You know, he, kept, he couldn't figure out the lady in the red dress. He kept couldn't figure it out. Remember he saw Deja Vu and like, oh, shit. I think we've got to this point in the WNBA where there are a lot of people talking who, A, don't care about the WNBA, never watched the WNBA game, don't know any of these players, never followed women's college basketball. But they want their $20 from Eli. They want their likes from Instagram. They want their TikTok videos to get monetized. They want their YouTube videos to get monetized. So they're building and creating this racial, gender, monogenous network of misinformation to fool you, to fool me, into thinking that's what's really happening in the real world. But it's not. That's not what's happening. I seen it. Kayla Clark, she won in six, but the attendance is still high. The ratings are still high. The little girls and, and, and guys that are there are still high. If it was social media, say this is not, everything's bad. That's not true. So what's really happening? What's the reality of the situation? The reality is people fester hate because they want to pull us apart. And it get, once it gets to the media, once again, no different than Stephen A. Smith. What, what did they say? They said, uh, Caitlin Clark, and they were talking about pretty privilege. Now listen, you know, to each his own. <laughs> you know, you like what you like. But I can't find one brother out there. And I know a lot of RG3s. I can't find one brother out there that say, hey, you know something? I watch Caitlin Clark because, you know, you know, she looked good. That's that's not the appeal. The, the men that are watching her because she plays like Steph. The actual audience that's watching. People say, oh, you know, everybody hates Angel Reese. And da, da, da. Angel Reese seems like a very sweet young lady. Who hates Angel Reese? A faction of Racist people online with no profile pictures, no job, sitting in their mama's basement, 
no lives, no family, no friends. That's not the reality. <laughs> that's not the real world. That's the that's that's the underworld. That's that's the that's the underbelly of social media. Most people, real people, want everybody to succeed. So when you see those tweets, and you see exactly what they're trying to do in the tweet, they're trying to make you, you're a black person, they're trying to make you feel bad for liking Caitlin Clark. If you're a white person and you don't like something about Angel Reese's play or whatever, they want you to everybody to think that you're a racist. But it's, none of it's real. This is not a real situation. And don't get me wrong, sometimes social media can reflect clearly what's going on in society. That part is real, the racial divide and things of that nature. But right now we're talking about basketball. And basketball, this is not real. This is not real. When these young ladies go out, of, it's not, and I'm telling you, as someone that watches the numbers, watches the trends, it's not real. When Kyrie Irving goes to Boston, that might be real. But what you're seeing right now is two separate things. You're seeing people that are trying to use these young ladies in the NBA for engagement farming, for racial debates, things that are just going to make them feel important because people are, I guess, paying attention or replying to it because they're trying to put a little hot sauce on it. You're writing 10-page. Somebody wrote like a 500-word, say, well, Kayla Clark wasn't popular before Angel Reese. That's a, that's a popular one that's for engagement baby. Caitlin Clark wasn't popular before Angel Reese, which, I mean, it's just not true, right? Like, the, the truth, a lot of times, is not, it's not profitable. Let's put it like that. If you say the truth is, Caitlin Clark was popular before she, she even ran into Angel Reese. Angel Reese and LSU was getting popular at the same time. They ran into each other, and blew each other up in different ways. It's as simple as that. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's not, that's, who's going who's to reply to that? Who's going to reply to that? Who's going to reply to the truth? Who's going to reply to, like, yeah, they helped each other out? And in turn, by helping each other out, they helped Cameron Brink out. They helped A.J. Wilson out. They helped Kelsey Plum out. They've helped every single woman in the WNBA. By them, just, you know, by coincidence, you know, whatever it is. You know, sometimes life just puts you together. By them getting together, you know, their stars are brighter. Your star is always brighter when you have somebody pushing you. That's just life in general. It's sports in general. You know, Rafael Nadal and, and, and Federer are not where they're at if they don't have each other. You understand what I'm saying? You know, it's like Jordan and the Pistons, Magic and Bird. You know, it's just, that's just the way it is. And maybe, you know, some rivalries will come out of this. Lakers, Celtics, that's just how it works. And, but that's just the truth and nobody wants to, to hear it. So remember that before you engage with these individuals on social media who are not going to watch a WNBA game who aren't going to spend their money on no merch or no league pass. All they care about is just they have no life. So their life is social media. It's the matrix. Remember old boy had the steak? Like to me, that was, the, the I just ended with this. That was the most, a lot of good stuff in the matrix. But that to me was the most interesting part of the Matrix. And I think it fits so well with social media today. You know, he was sitting down with, with Mr. Anderson and getting ready to turn on Neo. Mr. Anderson basically tells him, you know, this this steak, you know it's not real. <laughs> you know, like, you know, you've been to the other side. You know what you're doing is fake. What you're eating is fake. This whole thing is fake. And he basically said, Rather live a fake life than the real than the, the real one back there. And that's a lot of people on social media. They rather live in the fake bubble that is social media than to deal with 
real life and what's going on when you turn your phone off, you turn your laptop off, there's no TikTok, there's no Twitter, there's no Instagram, and you're just sitting on your couch and that's your life. And if you're sitting on your couch and that's your life and your life is so bad that you're like, I gotta be this person, I gotta be this persona on social media, all I can do is pray for you, bro.